Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Ansell, Chairman of the Department of Medicine at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City and Professor of Medicine at New York University School of Medicine. I am also Chair of the Medical and Scientific Advisory Board for the National Blood Clot Alliance. The National Blood Clot Alliance is a patient-led advocacy organization dedicated to promoting awareness about deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and clotting disorders among both patients and the public. We created this DVD to share important information from a new nationwide survey that we recently conducted. DVT and PE impose a major public health burden in the United States. The Surgeon General's call to action to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism estimates that each year up to 600,000 individuals are affected by DVT or PE and that at least 100,000 deaths are due to these diseases. This call to action also points to several patient groups who are at increased risk for DVT PE, including hospitalized patients, patients with active cancer, and patients who undergo hip and knee replacements. In response to the Surgeon General's call to action, the National Blood Clot Alliance conducted a nationwide survey about DVT PE among the public and among these at risk patient groups. Specifically, this DVD will provide you with an overview of our key survey findings about DVT PE awareness among the general public. It will also provide you with information about DVT PE awareness and DVT PE prophylaxis experiences among patients who have been hospitalized for three or more days. The results of this survey are being presented or shared at several important meetings, including among others, the Society of Hospital Medicine, the National Association of Orthopedic Nurses, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Public Health Association. More information about our survey findings, as well as additional educational tools for healthcare professionals and patients, can be found on our organization's website. We trust you will find this survey information helpful and that it will enable you to join in the efforts of the National Blood Clot Alliance to optimize the awareness and prevention of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. And most importantly, to support our efforts to stop the clot. Thank you. The National Blood Clot Alliance, or NBCA, is a volunteer-based, patient-led advocacy organization dedicated to the prevention and quality treatment of blood clots and clotting disorders. The organization's volunteer governing board consists of individuals directly affected by clotting disorders or blood clots. While the organization is volunteer-based, it remains science-driven. NBCA's Medical and Scientific Advisory Board is made up of physicians, researchers, and other healthcare professionals affiliated with prestigious universities, hospitals, and medical facilities nationwide. NBCA's awareness and advocacy efforts are focused on one singular imperative, to stop the clot. In 2008, the U.S. Surgeon General issued a call to action directly tied to NBCA's mission. This call to action to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism spotlights the public health impact and urgency associated with DVT and PE, sets forth recommendations for optimal diagnosis, prevention, and treatment, and suggests criteria for research, education, and important policy initiatives in this field. According to the Surgeon General's call to action, up to 600,000 people are affected by blood clots each year, and about 100,000 people in the U.S. die each year as a result. Other data, such as that from the Mayo Clinic, actually show the impact to be greater, with an estimated 900,000 Americans affected and 300,000 annual deaths. Hospitalization is considered one of the primary risk factors for deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Patients who are hospitalized for acute medical illness have a tenfold increased risk for DVT-PE. Most hospitalized patients have at least one risk factor present, including immobility, cancer, infection, or surgery. Without prophylaxis, thrombosis occurs in up to 40% of medical and general surgery patients and up to 60% of patients who have major orthopedic surgery. Roughly 1 out of 10 hospital deaths are related to PE. NBCA's DVT-PE Awareness Survey Response to the Surgeon General's Call to Action Benchmarks patient awareness and patient reported experiences with prophylaxis and it is a comprehensive study, one of the largest of its kind. 
Survey questions were developed by NBCA's Survey Steering Committee. This steering committee consisted of several members of NBCA's Medical and Scientific Board and also several physicians in the fields of hospital medicine, oncology, and orthopedics. The National Blood Clot Alliance worked with a national survey firm to conduct the survey via online or internet research panels very late in 2009 and conducted extensive evaluations of all survey findings in 2010. The survey was designed to measure awareness among the general public. Respondents in the national sample included 500 adults 20 years of age or older. The exact same awareness survey was conducted among at-risk patient groups, including 250 patients who had undergone hip or knee replacement, referred to here as total hip arthroplasty, THA, or total knee arthroplasty, TKA, 500 patients with a diagnosis of cancer within 12 months of sampling, and the group that is the focus of this presentation, 500 patients who had been hospitalized for three or more days within 12 months of sampling. These at-risk patient groups also were surveyed about. Information provided to them about DVT PE, their experiences with prophylaxis, issues involving adherence, for comparison, an online survey of 200 orthopedic surgeons also was conducted, and a separate awareness survey relative to blood clots that can lead to stroke was conducted among 500 patients with atrial fibrillation. Only key findings from the survey data relative to hospitalized patients and select data from the general public survey and oncology survey are being presented here. Looking more closely at the hospitalized patients involved in this survey, admissions involved, surgery, the largest category with 43%, major illness, 32%, accident and trauma, 11%, childbirth, 6%, all other reasons, 21%. 51% of patients surveyed were admitted for three to four days, 37% for five to 10 days, and 12% for more than 10 days. Turning to key findings, one compelling observation was that 43% of the respondents reported a family history of blood clots in the leg or lung, while 15% said that they themselves had actually experienced a blood clot in the leg or lung. Given this history of blood clots, it was troublesome to find that just 28% of hospitalized patients surveyed were aware of the term DVT, and just 15% were familiar with the term PE. Also of interest, nearly half of all patients report that their doctor did not provide information about blood clot risks related to hospitalization. Another important finding is connected to health literacy. While patients have a very low awareness of DVT and PE, the survey showed that most patients do know what a blood clot is, and virtually all respondents recognized that blood clots are life-threatening. Patient-reported experiences with prophylaxis varied. Less than one-third reported DVT prophylaxis with an anticoagulant pill or with an anticoagulant injection. 37% report aspirin use ambulation was most frequently cited. These data suggest that, despite the existence of evidence-based guidelines, DVT prevention practices experienced by these patients varied widely and were suboptimal. When comparing DVT-PE awareness among hospitalized and oncology patients and the general public, awareness was low among all groups. Most interestingly, the data demonstrated that at-risk patients are not significantly more aware of DVT-PE than the general public. When comparing risk factor awareness among these same groups, the data showed that, among those who can name DVT risk factors, sitting for a long time is most frequently cited and just 9% of hospitalized patients mention surgery and just 1% of cancer patients mention some cancer treatment. When comparing awareness of DVT signs and symptoms among these same groups, significantly fewer hospitalized and oncology patients could name DVT signs or symptoms compared to the general public. Roughly one in three of all respondents who said they know what PE stands for or what PE is claimed that they could name PE signs or symptoms. With regard to adherence among hospitalized patients, the survey found that Nearly one quarter of the 142 warfarin users in this sample said that warfarin is very or moderately difficult to use. The top three barriers cited, the need for regular blood testing, bruising, and dosing changes. One third of the 145 low molecular weight heparin users in this sample said that this therapy is very or moderately difficult to use. The main barriers they cited were injection related, 
Despite these significant therapeutic barriers, 62% of the respondents prescribed warfarin and 83% prescribed low molecular weight heparin said they did take it for the full length of time prescribed. The very small number of hospitalized patients who stopped therapy did so at the direction of their doctor. Some additional findings related to information and education. As previously noted, about half of all hospitalized patients surveyed said that they were not informed about the potential risk of developing blood clots as a result of their hospitalization. 57% said that their doctor did not discuss what can happen if a blood clot forms, and half said that they were not told about blood clot prevention. The survey instrument also included questions to gauge certain patient preferences. When asked what factors they thought might contribute to a more optimal type of treatment to prevent blood clots, four out of 10 patients said, a blood thinning medication with fewer potential drug interactions, a pill instead of injections, a blood thinning medication with minimal bleeding complications. When asked how they acquire medical information, the top responses were, from their doctor, 83%, from the internet, 71%, and nurses, family members, and health advocacy organizations followed behind. When asked about blood clot risk educational materials, most in the small group of patients who received them said they were given a brochure or pamphlet. When asked to rate such materials, the majority of these same respondents cited CDs, DVDs, and websites as very useful. In summary, NBCA's survey work identified key areas of concern and important future directions that should be pursued. The survey showed that risk does not equal awareness. Hospitalized patients demonstrate no significantly greater awareness of DVT or PE than members of the general public, and they are actually less aware of DVT and PE signs and symptoms than the general public. Large gaps in the provision of information were identified and may be one important cause of low awareness levels. Despite the existence of evidence-based guidelines to prevent DVT, the prophylaxis experiences reported by hospitalized patients are suboptimal. Numerous treatment barriers do exist. According to the results of this survey, these barriers, things like INR testing with warfarin and injection issues with low molecular weight heparin, affect, on average, one in three patients being treated. In response to these findings, the National Blood Clot Alliance has identified several important interventions that are needed. Patient awareness must be improved. Simplified language should replace technical terms. Information gaps must be filled and healthcare professionals should help improve patient knowledge of risks and treatment options. Evidence-based prophylaxis should be more effectively utilized. Research into new therapies should be conducted to reduce, if not eliminate, treatment obstacles. By moving forward on a path that is responsive to the Surgeon General's call to action to prevent DVT and PE, healthcare professionals and hospital medicine will contribute to improved DVT PE understanding and prophylaxis, reduced risks and reduced complications, and ultimately, decreased morbidity, mortality, and costs. The realization of this goal is critical to the patients that we serve and can only be achieved through the diligent efforts of key healthcare providers like you. The National Blood Clot Alliance thanks you for your commitment to DVT-PE education and prevention and for your efforts to stop the clot.